And now we're going to take a look at the analysis section. So in the last video, we looked at exploration. Now we get to the analysis. So you've already made your plan. And uh, what are what are we actually looking for in a lab report or in your final IA? So let's see. So again, I'm not going to read everything that's going on up here, but I'm going to draw more attention to all these numerous additional information boxes that thrown down here as in the previous video these are collected from a bunch of different places and there is some redundancy as well too but i think it's okay to constantly uh check to make sure that the whole story is actually following through in your lab report so what's this one about this column uh that i've separated out sufficient relevant quantitative and qualitative data that could support a detailed and valid conclusion to the research so if this is a data table, uh, make sure you have a clear title. The title is, it needs to be explanatory. I should be able, to be able to know what the experiment is just by looking at the title. It should have the independent and dependent variable in there. Table showing how the mass of blah, blah, blah affects the growth of blah, blah, blah in, and then put whatever unit is in there. Um, units should only appear in the cell headings, so you don't have to put, you know, S, S, S all the way down, just up in the top in the title, just put S for seconds. And so we know we're talking about time. So all the numbers down here are going to be time. So that's clear. Um, error for the instrument should, error for the instrument use or accuracy reading should be in the heading. So when we're talking about uncertainties, oops. And this row, I'm sorry, this column here is also talking about uncertainties. So make sure to include, there's more information on this out there, but whatever tool you're using, you need to put the plus or minus of, some people say, the smallest uh, half of the smallest measurement of that particular tool that you're using. So if you have a millimeter ruler that reads up to millimeters, then you can put plus or minus, knowing that if I round at the length of something here, it's actually maybe possibly halfway in between. So plus or minus half of the smallest unit that is there. So if that's a millimeter, then you would say plus or minus uh, half 0 0.5 of a millimeter. And you would put that in the headings up at the top as well too. Um, other sources have you denoted as uh, only one tenth of the actual unit or the actual smallest uh, unit that is there to be measured. So uh, use that to show that you understand that there is some estimation going on when you are rounding things. Keep decimal places consistent throughout down a column. So even if one says 0 0.8, the other says 0 0.75, you're actually rounding to 0 0.80. So keep that consistent all the way down. The mean values should not have more decimal places than the raw data. So if you calculate the average at the end, then make sure the decimal places are consistent. And so round them to the same number of decimal places. What is this saying? Uh, if your plan didn't work out too well, then this may be some place where you notice that there's not enough trials conducted, the data range is not appropriate. Um, make sure you're using SI units. We shouldn't be using uh, miles and uh, ounces here. We should be using grams, the metric system. And yeah, I think in general, just make sure that's really clear. If there is qualitative data to be included, then make sure that's written down separately and uh, it's clear what that qualitative data is related to. Now comes for the data analysis part. So obviously you know how to calculate an average. Often we'll have that if there are repeat trials. Average alone, I think it's somewhere in here, I wrote it. Anyway, I can't find it. Average alone is probably not enough to be considered uh, great data processing. So you should try to do some kind of statistical test. You should try to do some kind of uh, correlation curve or calculate a correlation coefficient. You got to do a little bit more um, than basic data processing is what they say here. So again, uh, if you're doing a chi-square test or a t-test, make sure you have a table showing how you calculated that. And the table title should be very clear chi-square test showing blah 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 these two variables make sure that's in there um enough trials additional statistical testing there's some good stuff down here let's see include your null and alternative hypotheses for statistical tests make sure everyone knows what your degrees of freedom and critical values are at the probability level explain the choice for the test you're actually using y t test or y chi squared test and that'll help you figure out if you're using an appropriate test as well too if you have a graph make sure the graph has its own title and everything else a graph's easy to read title uh significant figures consistent 
Um, should you include your statistical tables with your critical values, you can put that at the end. If there's any calculations you need to do, demonstrate that you know how to do those particular things. On your graph, if you're using software for it, make sure you're not just using your software defaults. Make sure what you're choosing for the graphing software is appropriate to answering your particular question and looking for patterns there. Do it by hand if you're not sure, but Logger Pro is out there, Excel is out there. Make sure you understand what you're doing with that and there's no uh, extra stuff that shows up on the graph that doesn't need to be there or isn't explained. So make sure you are actually doing the processing. Error bars would be a great thing to show and that will help with your discussion in your evaluation as well too when talking about precision and outliers and uh, reliability of your data overall. Line of best fit. This is an important one. Consider if the adjacent data points should be joined by a straight line. So let's see. So if I plot a little graph over here and I got some dots, you have to decide, do I do this? Do I connect the dots or erase that? Or do I draw a line of best fit? It depends on the data. It depends on your background information. If you have reason to believe that it is, there's going to be a pattern that looks like this, then you can do that. If not, though, you should just play the connect the dot game and then try to uh, interpolate between. Don't stretch these graphs. Like if you only collect the data up to here, you shouldn't be stretching it out all the way down to here unless you have good reason to believe that that's the case. So check out what's in here. Sorry, it's getting so messy, but you got to go back and take a look. Okay, let's see what else. So uh, evidence and full and appropriate consideration impact of measurement uncertainty on the analysis. So let's see, this can be interpreted multiple ways. So we talked about the uncertainty here with the measurements and depends on if you're doing a bio or a chem or a physics IA, uh, the treatment of this will be a little bit different. But you can also be talking about the different types of errors, uh, systematic errors may be a, a particular thing. If you're not sure about the difference between random and systematic errors, I think I made a video for grade seven this year and it's there. It's uh, it's brand new, so you can check it out. And uh, there's some there's some little examples there, but a lot of people don't understand the difference between random and systematic errors. Um, a systematic error is more like, let's see, you've got a scale and there's nothing on the scale but it already measures 0 0.01 grams. Now, everything that you measure on that thing is gonna be off by 0 0.01 grams. That's gonna affect the accuracy. Accuracy is about how close your measurements are to the actual, actual number. So that's accuracy. Uh, a random error is like, okay, you've done everything you can to control the variables. Uh, you've got the, the fans turned off, air conditioning turned off, but somebody opens the door at the side and a little bit of wind comes in and that kind of messes up uh, one of your one of your trial readings and you get a number that kind of is an outlier if you recognize that that's the case then that you can you can eliminate that particular result if you know what the source of that error was that random error um, and you can repeat that particular reading but if everything is controlled really well you're trying to minimize these kinds of random errors and uh, the other thing human error you should just avoid talking about like i forgot to take a reading after three minutes blah 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 so when someone else is doing the experiment you don't have to give them instructions basically telling them uh, if you mess up here's what you do you got to assume that everyone's going to follow the instructions and you were supposed to follow your own instructions as well too so there may be some extra stuff in here but a lot of this can get addressed in the evaluation as well too. But primarily we're looking for up in the top of the data tables that you've got these uncertainties actually uh, documented. So a lot of this stuff can go into the evaluation as I just mentioned as well too. So you can see this uh, throughout the entire uh, report. What else? Finally, after you've processed your data, so you've done a t-test or you've done a chi-squared test, have you analyzed it correctly? Have you interpreted the t-value against the critical values accurately? Have you interpreted the chi-square value against the, the, uh, the critical values accurately? Did you choose the correct numbers of degrees of freedom? And uh, anyways, have you presented everything neatly so we can understand uh, what you were trying to do? And is there, let's see, correctly interpreted so that a completely valid and detailed conclusion to the research question can be deduced? 
So if it's a graph as well and you've drawn a correlation line, are you reading that correlation line correctly um, leading into your conclusion? So this can be found in the conclusion. Some people like to put it before the conclusion immediately following the data processing as well too. So have you collected data properly? Have you analyzed it more than just doing an average? And have you uh, done a correct interpretation of that while recognizing that there are uncertainties and different sources of error? Wow, this is starting to look crazy out here. Woo.